I'm your host, Mr. Svetlana Stelina Lover. Many of you like to read about her, please go right ahead. But, um, we've got this focus here, and we've already done all of it. So, Mr. Svetlana Stelina Lover. Many of you like to read about her, please go right ahead. But, um, we've got this focus here, and we've already done all of it. So, if you're learning about Democracy in Russia, please go right ahead, which I've done before. A PSD campaign. A platform for a modern Russia. An appeal to force. As well as the people's mandate, please go right ahead. But right now, we can also campaign here. I'm also, I, I'll be honest, I did use cons commands to make sure we can get all these done. Just because I don't want to end up having to redo all this stuff again. Just to get to where uh, uh, where we need to go. So if you're going to do this, please go ahead. Please tell us Stelina 1. I don't want to have to do this again, so. <clears throat> Electoral results. We want the PSD to win, which, even with using cons commands, also we beat up the Finns. So, and actually that was pretty fair over here, but, you know, whatever. PSD is 61.9% of the vote. 124 deputies, so not bad. The Sovereign Democratic Party elected. The votes have been tied and the campaigning has ceased. Being the Republic's first presidential election since stabilizing its democracy, higher voter turnout and general optimism were reported amongst the populace in the end. Svetlana Stelina's Sovereign Democratic Party won the election, and the newly elected president gave a passionate inaugural address in front of the National Assembly. The most nationalist of the Republic's main three parties, the PSD has always pushed for expansion of the military and police. Combined with the fanatic opposition to extremism has caused the critics to call them authoritarians and glorified despots. However, it's clear that their nationalist populist rhetoric has impressed voters, mainly, and many see the current state of Russia requiring strong leadership and even stronger military. <clears throat> In the end, all that matters is that the Republic survived. Under the PSD, it shall thrive. The people have, of course, spoken. Russian economy. Well, let's do freedom, sovereignty, and patriotism. Svoboda, souverainitet, e patriotism. The motto of the Sovereign Democratic Party. We are the party of strength. We are the party of sovereignty. We are the party that fights for all of the people. And most of all, we are the party for a strong Russia that works for all of its citizens. The people know our platform and have given us a broad mandate to carry it out. Let us not disappoint them by going back on our promises. Uh, thank you. And the new Russian century. Democratic center. Let's see this one. New Russian century. Tsushima and the Treaty of Portsmouth, Tannenberg and Brest-Litovsk, Barbarossa and General Panos. Russia has been the victim of disaster, defeats, and destruction at the hands of foreign powers, but we refuse to let that continue. No longer will the 20th century be known as the Russian century of humiliation, <clears throat> because with a new republic. Russia once again rises to prominence on the world stage. We shall finally be strong once more, and we shall make this new century into the Russian century. A century with Russia claiming its position as a rule of power. Because I do want to do this up too. The Russian economy would be good to get, good to, get to as well. <clears throat> Rapidly improving poverty. So, totally you had to use consequence, like I said, but that's okay. You know what, if we can prove ourselves, keep doing that. Um, exert influence in Southern Russia, well, we'll get there eventually, too. Uh, we're still fine over here. Also, I apologize for not being able to address comments. Um, to, at the time of recording, there's an update for TNO, and I have to keep the game running pretty much the entire time until we get finish this campaign, so I do apologize for not being able to get to comments currently, so. I do apologize, but since we're here... Um, anything here? No. And I don't like doing this, but... Pick up military divisions. But happy December, everybody. Happy, happy December. Now, I just converted all these guys to this type of division, which is very simple. Actually, I thought we had... Oh, we have an even more simpler one. More simpler? A simpler one. See, on the side, as she looked at the multitude of suggestions for upcoming speech that had been thrown under her desk. When she had thought of working to unite Russia, working to a better tomorrow for democracy, she had imagined fools throwing around themselves around at irrelevant issues instead of looking at the bigger picture. The biggest points of contention lately had not been a military strategy or anything that actually had any meaning. No, the bureaucrats were battling over the redemption of Russia. She needed to submit the state position, otherwise the Republic would still be babbling on about the culture in the year 2000. Looking over suggestions for opening her speech gave her a headache. One leftist proposed that opening address would be towards those who reside within a controlled area of Russia. I contrasted with one man on the right who declared that she should address her speech to the most loyal Russians of the Empire. It went on like that, paragraphs and pages on what some thought were her first words should be. That even brush upon the rest of the critique she was given. Some believed on both sides that how deep her voice was held the utmost importance. One concerned educated wrote in frantic pace about how speaking deep voice would seem imperialistic. A minor just learned the letters just to write to her pleaded, and scrawled Russian that she acted as a man. Selena, having wasted her knife, tossed a pile to the wastebasket. For a speech, she already knew the general idea of what both sides of the party wanted. The left pandering to progressive causes and pluralism, the right lip service to a strong Russia, she weighed her options. She little cared for the actual issue, but the right were pres presently a more powerful ally. <clears throat> I would anger the leftists, of course. But of course, perhaps that didn't quite matter all that much anyways. As long as Russia could be united under the free republic, it didn't matter who she stiffed. Decide you finally get it right. My fellow Russians address you today. So empowered. Progressive wing of the PSC. Let's go. I don't know. Which, 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 way, which way are we doing? Uh, education and heavy machinery. Sure. Um, let's see. It's marginally left-leaning. Progressive wing is influential. And the nationalist wing is marginalized. So let's go with the right wing for now. Or at least the nationalists. 
it's, it's still mostly unified still, so I'm not too upset about that, but uh, the Russian economy. After over a decade of German terror bombing and the chronic insecurity caused by the raids of rival warlords, economic activity in a corner of Russia is on life support. Now that a government is stable, we can tool over our own borders, resuscitating the economy will be given a priority for the new government. As we try to cut down on all the uh, uh, overextended administration, of course. That would do quite well on this. Hopefully we can cut down that debt quite a bit before we re-go back to 43 combat with infantry divisions with logistic companies, I might add. Now we're really going to focus on a lot of industry. A lot, a lot, a lot of industry. Eh, not bad looking so far. We did get a functional administration. Um, nice industrial base. Industrial equipment. Nice, not bad. Agriculture. Uh, we'll just keep doing a lot of this stuff too. Still left leaning, so whatever. New Russian century. The weak suffer what they must. The principal sat before Fabi and his face carefully blank. There was a certain risk to these things, he knew. One can never be too certain about the ears of children, especially children close to certain groups frowned upon by the state, and even so, he had to try. Best approach the issue through saps and parallels. As it were, Fabian, you know why you're here. Fabian paused from his moody fiddling with the high school badge, only shooting him a poisonous look before returning to his grubby fingers. The principal sighed, took a deep breath. If Fabian wasn't going to respond to the carrot, he would move to the stick. Fabian, I'll be blunt. This isn't the first time you're here, and this isn't the last or the first time you've assaulted somebody. We know that the children you fight have parents who did certain unapproved actions, but this school is as much for their education as yours. Why do you keep doing this? Perhaps it was a petulance in his voice that made Fabian respond. He looked up, a strange smile upon his features. The principal felt something churn, vague, and billowing and utterly cold in the pit of his stomach. Something was wrong, something was very, very wrong. <clears throat> because they tell me to. They say our country is becoming great again, and of all the foreigners and the parasites, the bullshies and the bulches, bull they're, they're going into the trash bin. They say Russia is destined for greatness, and I want to make sure our country is strong. He puffed his chest, just like Father wants me to. The principal clutched at his desk, it was no comfort at all. Who, Fabian, who's telling you this? The radio, the president, everyone is saying it. And if everyone's saying it, then it must be okay. Hmm. I want to increase poverty, uh, get the poverty to rapidly improve itself. And aid for the agricultural sector. Cut off from the outside world by constant turmoil, Russia's farmers have suffered long, difficult years between a, a general lack of feed, modern equipment, infrastructure, and customers. The agricultural sector has been squeezed from all sides. Without a steady influx of food from a strong farming base, building up a country is impossible. It's for this reason that agricultural aid is a necessity for economic improvement. <clears throat> through extensive subsidies, loans, and other forms of financial assistance. The government can revitalize the Russian agricultural sector, not soon enough. As our growing cities team with hungry mouths to feed, we need as much food as we can get. From mobile destination, the political influences of Nizhny Novgorod, as one of the largest cities in Western Russia, and thus the source of a significant portion of the National Assembly's deputies, has continued to grow. As has the influence of the Iron Governor Konstantin Katushev, which I might have read before, but oh well. Katushev's now extensive political infrastructure, and consequently his ability to mobilize support for the SMR within the region has led to other parties being all but shut out of this Assembly delegation. Indeed, deputies from Katushev's domain now constitute a considerable portion of the entire Young and Former Caucus, affecting the party's leadership as a whole. Recognizing this, the SMR has begun shifting more and more to its administrative organs, other than those required in sective cards up to the city. A corollary to the shift in both caucus demographics and organizations, the rapidly increasing influence of Katushiv within the party and the national level. He has reportedly begun making suggestions on electoral and positional policy, and is considered likely that other figures within the SMR's leadership, senior leadership will be unable to resist them. Among oppositional party organizers, consensus has therefore been reaching that Katushiv has been considered a critical and irreplaceable figure within the SMR has been identified as a prime candidate for potential party leadership in the near future. The Iron Governor's influence grows and grows, and of course, grows. The National Recovery Initiatives. The PSC has great plans for the rejuvenation of the Russian nation and people, but none of that will come to fruition without mobilizing the people for the cause. The government will establish sweeping programs for public works, industrialization, and defense construction to realize the people in the project of rebuilding the Republic. Where private enterprises shy as where the people will step in, the government will reward them with further labor. Hatred surrounds. In a bucket of Siktivkar, two seemingly unremarkable men sat at a table, drinks in ham, with undistinguished appearances and relatively plain clothes. One would never suspect that either was a prominent politician. Nevertheless, they were exactly that, being Lena Kantorovich and Yetseb, a Yevsai, Lieberman. Though they favored different factions, both men had remained friends over a decade, and small differences in politics wasn't about to change that now. <clears throat> Expand the fire grid? 
They had little left besides each other, after all. Atos Kantorovich declared joyously to the freedoms of Russia and the salvation of the Jewish people. Looking around in alarm, Lieberman let out a breath when he realized the pub was empty except for themselves and the staff. Careful, Leonid, he hissed. Much as we work to heal Russia of its bigotry, many remain who would hate us for who we are. The brainless goons of people like Shevarevich and Gumilya still want their heads to say nothing of the Reich and their jackboot dogs. Hatred surrounds us, my friend, and it'll take a long time for it to cool. <clears throat> A, smad, a small, sad smile on his face, Kantorovich shook his head. That is precisely what we must celebrate. We've saved at least part of Russia from itself, and in doing so brought the hated Reich a step closer to its demise. If we do not celebrate who we are in a situation like this, we may as well be dead as with, with so many of our people. His brow furrowing in a worry, Lieberman locked eyes with Kantorovich catching his attention. Maybe that's so he admitted his expression troubled. Even so, I need you to promise me one thing. Just don't get yourself killed. <clears throat> it's not bad to do. You get more stability and a lot of daily political power, even though it costs a lot to do that one. Um, I don't want to get more power. Go do that one. Ivanovich, Ivanov, not Ivanovich, but Ivanov Sessions. Sergey Ivanov, not a politely the blubbering middle-aged lady waiting for the sobs like hiccups on a child. The died down Ivanov murmured. Uh, we are terribly sorry for your losses, Madam uh, Lakova. The last few years have been harsh on us all, but my heart bleeds for you and your son. The mention of your son seemed to sweep Lakova into a fresh wave of sadness. My son, my son. How will he be employed with his hand? How may I may ask you? And with the latest, latest layoffs? Yes, cut him an organ grinder in a machine shop. I'm told that the shop is shut down for lack of money, so it eases your heart, madame. The men who hurt, neglect your, hurt your son are no longer at large to do so. As a man sniffled, Ivana gestured frantically to the audio crew. Time to wrap this up in a nice little closing segment. And they could begin the work of cleaning or clearing the women's voluminous tears out of her seat in the table. Goodness, this would certainly leave a stain. As the latest budget of the Republic suggests continued economic downturn for the next three fiscal quarters, women like Lakova find their worries only growing. Her earned savings are drying up, businesses shutter, the revenues fleeing to the four winds, and as Russia's workers struggle, the question is not whether the government is willing or whose government will act to rebuild the economy. If on a pause for dramatic effect, the question is whether the government will do it by itself. Or the working men of Russia must force their hand. Thank you for joining us today, and this has been Sergei Ivanov, reporting from Radio Free Russia, and now for a word from our sponsors. Bad economy grows worse. What's new in Russia? Huh. What's new in Russia? Not much. We are training a lot of these uh, empty divisions, I'll call them that. <laughs> nah, I can do that for now, it's fine. Uh, we've got three th research slots. Happy 1967, everybody. Hope you're having a great, great year. Happy February now. Debt to GDP ratio is still going up, but 3.999999 billion is not bad. Hey, it dropped. Even better. Nice. Yeah, I'll definitely do that on expanded rural opportunities. Um, agricultural society development begin to rapidly improve. I mean, don't get me wrong. I ooh, uh, if you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. I so we we still need to do this one. Rap ooh, we pass wrongs. Except the big tent model, the opposition's finest. Justice before compromise. A lot of political power. Party unity shall greatly increase. Reach for healthy competition. You get more stability though. Get 100 political power though. Honestly, we got enough uh, uh, stability right now, so I don't mind losing it some more. <laughs> Party unity shall greatly increase, though. I like that a lot. We're at 71%, which is not bad. Ideologically centrist. Um, and towards this one. Except the Big Tent model. The PSC is a great Big Tent, been a Big Tent party for the entire span of its existence. Accepting a wide variety of political oppositions, ideologies, and approaches towards getting things done within its membership. This unique structure has been instrumental in bringing us to a power. It ensures that the entirety of the acceptable political spectrum is represented within a party. To work with other parties, therefore, is unnecessary. If the opposition wishes to achieve positions of power within the Republic, it will be through PSD institutions. There are plenty of opportunities to side with their party, not to secede them. It's simply the choice of the opposition to weaken themselves. Still expanding that power grid. Hey, 2.602. We're doing great. Until these guys are trying to invade these guys, and we've got to reform these divisions and do really, really well with them really quickly. Nice. Follow it up with adjust this before compromise. We won't work across the aisle. Why should we? Who wants to water down our necessary laws and policies just for the sake of patting ourselves on the back that we work with a few minority parties? It's unnecessary as we have the strength to get things done by ourselves without the consultation of other parties. Moreover, the people explicitly elected us to get these things, not any other party. Uh, to do these things, at least. They wanted a strict PSD term, and they got it. And we will not deliver anything less than we, what we promised. Campaign against discrimination. Part of, you, need, you need your party will decrease. You're doing your history. That says shared identity. Ooh, slightly decreasing coursing times very, will be very nice. 
And you get 25 more political power, which isn't very much, but... That's when you lose stability. And, but, uh, a chart of universal rights. Significant right-wing backlash. Women in the workplace with gender equality. Better get someone gets more output. We just strain lose his stability. And enact decommunization laws. We get... Oh my... This is, this is not fair. Like, everything on the right side here is just ex what we want. We want more of this stuff. The center of politics. Svetlana was, uh, for once, all smiles. <clears throat> Ivan Ivanovich Ivanov could hardly believe it himself. Uh, even on occasions, they'd invite her onto the Radio Free Sictive Car. Uh, or Sictive Car Political Specials. Back in the Old Republic, she'd rarely done more in the way of warmth than an occasional wan smile. Now, however, she was showing off her brightest thousand-watt grin to the committee gathered in front of her, and Ivanov couldn't help but admit to feel a little jealous. These people weren't even still in his allies, for God's sakes. All technocrats and left-leaning to boot. What the heck was she expected to accomplish? A series of handshakes and a war meal? His, her, his confusion was dispelled at the event formally commenced, as the technocrats laughed and gossiped in a way of typical boy's boy. S Selena cleared her throat and said four words Ivanov never anticipated coming from her mouth. I'm on your side. This was, to put it mildly, a surprise. In the silence, Selena began her trademark laser eye focus on the key members of the room, sizing each one up in turn. She reiterated, I'm on your side, gentlemen. I know my party's had differences of opinion with you in the past. The issues of income redistribution, workers' rights, the passage of so-on-so -so budget, we are not and never will be totally in agreement. Selena nodded to herself, as convincing her conscience of something. But we are forming a new party now, one that balances dogma with reason. We will listen to all, and more importantly for you married gentlemen, as we will listen to you. All we ask is for your membership, and we can begin the real negotiations. I promise you gentlemen that the world awaits, but you have to seize it with us first. Darn, that's pretty impressive politics. Towards the sovereign future. It's time for the signature policy of the PSD to be unveiled. The National Sovereignty Act will change our diplomatic position forevermore. Strategic resources in Russia, such as oil, will be severely restricted from the international market, but this is not a protectionist act or one aimed at autarchy. These limitations will be lifted for those with defensive ties within the Republic. If one wishes to gain access to our bountiful resources, one must make an arrangement with us to assist our military development, and everyone wants these strategic materials. Hey, less than 3.2 billion? Not bad. Nice. Of course, there's only 67, but still. 51, 42, 73, not bad. Ooh. Worker training? Yes, please. Agriculture mechanization? Yes, please, because that'll help out with poverty. Right? Yes, sir. <clears throat> A shining precedent. Um, yeah, I should have done this one too earlier. More, even more growth, stimulate local businesses. Where detractors often charge that the PSD cares little for private industry in favor of a state-owned economy, nothing can be further from the truth. We recognize that we are not infallible or all-knowing. We recognize that we are uh, private enterprise will always be more effective at identifying and meeting economic needs at the local level far removed from the specific needs of the state in defense, infrastructure, and natural resources. We do not seek to control every aspect of economic life in the Republic. Indeed, we encourage people to embrace a spirit of competition, to have a vested interest in their own prosperity. In this regard, all... All the state should do is create incentives for the Russian Republic's entrepreneurs to invest in the economy and to provide access to capital for those who seek to start a business of their own. Nice. We're back up to 3.5 billion in debt, but whatever. Oh, we get it on the next. No more easy bargains. Still in a crowd at advisors fairly often. <clears throat> oh, they're fully unified. Holy crap. That's a lot to be expected from the one who took pride in her name as the Lady of Steel. Usually this took the form of mild snarls and accusations of incompetence, which was comparatively mild for the Republic's politics. It was of little consequence to the advisors after she calmed down the usually more amenable to discussion, even if she remained reluctant to change her views on anything. Anger was common and easy, of course, to deal with. This uh, preternatural uh, calm, however, was not. Stina looked at the senior staff, the economic bureau, calm and smiling, and totally unpackable. No, I will not. That is the end of the matter. I will not reconsider the signing of the Sovereignty Act under any circumstances. She flipped open a dossier, looking through its contents as if her staff were simply not there. One of the advisors, a mid-level bureaucrat, made the mistake of speaking his thoughts. President Selena, with all due respect, the act will cripple our economic will and devour our private industry. I have been on the phone with worried uh, corporate clients all week. Instantly, her, her gaze, as scorching as a sun and far less measured than such, was upon him. With all due respect, I care not for a wit for you or your corporate suits. My job and my heart lies with this country, and if we are to sell its treasure to those who cannot be trusted with it, we may as well disband the army and lower our banners tomorrow. She turned to her papers. Oh, the rare vehemence. You are forgiven the, the little transgression of your ignorance. Speak again. Uh, speak against me again, and I will ensure that even the privilege is stripped from you. Now leave. The advisor trembled as he left. National Sovereignty Act. <clears throat> and we lost all that political power. God dang it. Um, development, National Sovereignty Act. 
Probably enough, Selena looked down once more at the bill which lay on her desk, the lines of a sheet, cover sheet. Unmarred and blank, it was titled Unassuming a Bureaucratic Euphemism, typical of laws passed by the National Assembly in the age of newly unified Western Russia. The National Sovereignty Act. The culmination of weeks of research, drafting, and committee votes, and the greatest stride yet towards achieving the sovereign de democratic parties at Geneva's strong independent Russia. Within it was everything that she had advocated for on the campaign trail. Regarding the threat of foreign imperialism and dependency, limits on trade performed without defensive obligations, limits on debt, and increased import duty, all of it would serve towards the ultimate cause, the cause of a Russia free from both free from threat, both external and internal. A Russia which would be seen by the world as an equal power in its own right, a Russia which one day could stand alongside the U.S. itself as a bastion of democracy and stability. Uh, she looked up once more, nodding to the cameras which clustered around her desk, littered with papers. Her silver pen gilded or glided across the paper, leaving her signature at the bottom marked approved. The reporters clapped politely, but her focus was elsewhere out of the window. Far away, she imagined in every city and town of Russia, every mansion, apartment, or rural hut. The people of the Republic now lived in a world they had just become a little bit safer for Russia. Our sovereignty once more is insured. The value of trade deals made with their state shall be limited unless a partnered nation has a defensive arrangement with the Republic. Our international interest rate shall be lowered as a consequence of a more limited apparatus for borrowing. So we have limited exports and a raise flat tax with high income weight. If we get more political power, we lose quite a bit more taxable population. Ooh. In a bold foreign policy move, the president of the West Russian Republic, Svetlina Yelselvana, Svetlina has signed an ambitious bill written with intent to and secure the economic and political sovereignty of the Russian state. Within a bill is an arsenal of trade stipulations and requirements, the most extreme of which passes a limit on, or places a limit, on the value of trade deals with non-foreign, non-allied foreign nations which may make with the newly uh, established republic. Most notably, this bill is projected to seriously limit the ability for foreign nations to purchase Russian oil reserves without first committing to a defensive arrangement with the West Russian state. In a matter consistent with President Stalinist theory of sovereign democracy, her state has once more uh, driven a hard bargain to the international community in the name of Russian independence, a bold move. That's definitely bold. More growth, industry expertise goes up. Educated populace. Development of a modern Russia. Our state exists in a dangerous neighborhood. With the Germans to the west and a motley collection of pretender states to the east. While private enterprise and free competition will continue to be encouraged within the Republic, we don't have the luxury of waiting for economic development from the bottom up. Mo modernity. We'll come to Russia under the leadership of the PSD and the strong guidance of state-owned enterprises and crucial sectors. Comp to plan complementing as private companies. We have no other choice, even if it means that there will be sacrifices asked to the people and the workers along the way. Nice. More growth. Minus 0.3. Awesome. Oh, wait, do we have more? Oh. Oh, our credit rating improved. Hey, that's great. Hey, we're B. We're fair. I like that a lot. Uh, that's not bad. It's been rural opportunities. Uh, let's go back over here. Democratic Center. The PSD stands for many things, for freedom and democracy, sure, but for moderation above all. The people of Russia do not need radical and extreme solutions for the problems. Demagogues have destroyed the country and they do not wish for another one. They want sensible and reasonable solutions that don't affect their lives any more than necessary. The PSD is at the center of the politics and abhors extremism in all forms. Democracy and moder moderation will, is our guiding principle and will draw a hard line against anyone who goes against it. Not enough. Rapidly improving, we like that a lot. Ooh, industrial expertise, nice. Centralized election administration. Progressive wing shall be empowered. Okay, increases the voter turnout. A survey of election results. Uh, rural regions, we get political power. Authoritarian democracy. Honestly, we could use more probably authoritarian democracy. Um, as much as I want, it's only 25 more political power. Syria election republic elections centralized election administration uh, reduces admin strain you know what we're going to go to the right side anyways we'll probably go with centralized election administration free and fair elections must be ensured throughout the republic and that means fraud cannot be tolerated we'll establish a nonpartisan agency tasked with rooting out and eliminating election fraud and corruption election administration will be placed under federal control although we will make exceptions for local elections in minority republics vote rigging and other such actions are a threat to the very legitimacy of our democracy and be eliminated <clears throat> Increase the minority rights, voter franchise. Well, we'll see about that. And we could go very more nationalist, but ooh, power to you, ooh, ad admin efficiency. Not bad. The Senate can hold this time. The Valerie gazed uh, askance at the sign. It appeared that his pleas to the PSD has been in vain, despite the 
strenuous protest of the country. The bright blue bear had been plastered all over the arm's length placard and ugly splash of blue, white, red across um, the canvas gray. Valerie promised himself that once this was all over, he would take some time out of his schedule to speak some very deliberate words to the visual designer. Well, it wasn't like the logo was important. Taking his placard, Ballard began the 20-minute trek to his appointed district. He at least had gotten lucky with the placing. Here, some volunteers would have to, have to stay overnight thanks to the travel time back and forth, and as he arrived in the little Lark Square, he set up his placard next to a couple of chairs with a sign hung between the lamplights, a conversation about democracy. All welcome. And research. Well, the first to approach the improvised booth he'd set up uh, was a pensioner, a lady in her 60s clutching a handbag. Ballard helped her into the seat opt to his as she snarled at him. Get out of my rea district reactionary. This place isn't for your type and it never will be. Valerie simply smiled, drawing a secret weapon from his bag, a flask of tea. Chewed and thoroughly still, uh, stirred. Reactionary? That's an interesting word to use, madam. I'd like to hear more about what you have to say about this. And if I'm not wrong, you stay on Petrov Street, don't you? Our representatives have never been to the area. The afternoon wore on, clouds scudding and fading across the pattern bands of the horizon. Valerie danced with words, taking the lady on a tour of democratic ideals, the PSD's manifesto on policy making, the agenda of unionism. By the time the lady left, her head was full of strange new thoughts and something even stranger. A sympathy to democracy. As Valerie made a satisfied note on his log, he wrote the lady's name in the night with a star next to it. Keep tabs on this one, arrest if suspicious activity is found. Organized secondary appeal, potential supporter. No room for corruption. The Russia has gotten a reputation as a place where an elite political class can live off the wealth squeezed out from the suffering peasants. Huh. Never heard of that. Just kidding. So it was in the days of the Tsars when rich aristocrats would live in sumptuous, sumptuous mansions surrounded by the grass and mud huts of the serfs. And so it was in the days of the Soviet Union when party members would race to the dakas and hand limousines, passing the horse carriages of the proletariat. No longer. Corruption will be eliminated in Russia. A mass that finds a way to those who seek to use their positions to profit from the people. And there will be no exceptions or tolerance at all. 3.5 billion? You know, it could be better. But it could be a lot worse. Keep working on it. Yeah, that's still pretty bad. It hurts our stability. Even though we're really, really fucking good on stability for some reason. Another paramount civil, uh, civil duty. Any republic is only as good as the people it represents. Too often, people of other nations have allowed others to do the deciding for them, rather than face the issues head on. The results have been disastrous every time. We will not let that happen here. Voting is key to our democracy, and so is actually running for positions as well. Local elections and referenda are highly important, no less than the national ones. If the people understand this and act on it, we will secure democracy for a long time to come. What's oh, not to love? Oh, actually, look at that. Come on. We don't care about the West Indies. No one in Russia actually gives a crap about them, so. Oh, more attacking strength. Yuri Evtukovich. I wonder if you've ever worked for a guy named Tabaretsky. Hey, but if you like to read about better industrial expertise, please, 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 please. Pa -pa 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 please go right ahead. Excellente. Experience industrial space. Yes, please. And that is a great thing. Go and do that. And then two there. Do that. Once you get to like 30 divisions, we'll probably stop doing that stuff, but we'll see. No room for corruption, my friends. And you probably want to head to the polls as well. Enough. Yet Katarina fainted headlong into her desk. It was sudden. One moment her eyes were open, then it closed the next. The sound echoed long and loud in the hallways of the tax collection department, like groceries falling out of some immense table. A typewriter beneath her fingers spasm its letters, spilling off the page, and it went silent. Nikolai flinched, but barely. His own vision began to swim. He moved the typewriter away from her still twitching hands, taking care to remove the document and place it somewhere safe. There was valuable information in there, and the boss would kill them both if they, she knew they'd waste office supplies and a mere health concern. The middle-aged woman did not resist as he tucked her head above her arms in his jacket. <clears throat> Look at that. Uh, uh, jacket on her back. Twenty interrupted hours of work. It was a wonder she wasn't in a coma. Well, it was the best he could do. Grabbing the document she'd been working on. Nikolai took his position began to rewrite her, her own words. In truth, he already knew what she was working on. They were working on all the same project now as they'd been for the 20, last 20 hours. <clears throat> A finger shaking slightly from the chill of her air breeze. He wrote tax fraud investigation. Western Russian Republic to citizen something numbers and letters. Name Dmitry Andreevich Goncharov. Suspected violations, misuse of campaign funds to the sum of 20, 2 million rubles. Da. Darnest that was spinning. Cursing at the error, Nikolai went to fetch some more tea. This corruption investigation was heck on earth, but Arena was the most capable brewer he'd ever known. Maybe she'd even flirt back this time. Corruption purge of invoice by invoice? Through sufficient errors, a pattern emerges. God, I don't want to do that one, but. I don't want to lose the political power. Best of construction, not worth it. Uh, with the vampire, it might not be bad, but not worth it. War sport? Ooh, actually, this would be a good for war sport. I'll do it for the war sport. And then we're going to keep going this way, but for some investments, let's see. 
Taxes will decrease, growth will go up, but interest rates will decrease by 0.8%. Poverty will begin to slowly improve. This may be seen as a betrayal of our principles. State development. Ooh, poverty rate will still improve, though. Growth will increase by 1%. Well, this will still increase by 0.65%. Increase our civilian cost by this much. But let's just slowly improve, and I don't want to slowly improve. We're going to do this one. Prior to state development. Getting the economy off the ground is a Herculean task in developing any country, even more so in an economy like Russia's, reeling from years of conflict. The PSD has decided that the state must utilize its coffers and manpower to jumpstart the new economy by establishing state-owned enterprises to develop critical sectors of the economy and to advance key infrastructure projects throughout the Republic. Some will call this inefficient, arguing that the state would run these projects at a loss. We answer that nobody else is willing to lay the foundation for a modern economy. Unless, we have a, unless they have a better idea, they can stay out of the way. And they'll probably do resources of the motherland. The territory of Russia is rich in natural resources, oil, minerals, and crops. Too often, however, these resources are used as a means of personal enrichment for the various warlords without a care for the development of a modern economy. Now that the Republic is exerting control over a growing swath of Russian territory, we should establish a government agency to take stock of the bounties of Russian soil and to ensure that they are directed for the good of the people and for the state and the people. Go to the polls, event notes. <clears throat> in truth, I hadn't expected such a huge turnout, indeed. I expected much of a turnout at all. Most of the district electorate from our briefings were the typical apathetic citizens with not much regard for politics. Many of my own interactions were with factory managers who expected only the good things in life, not the responsibility to think about their implications. This event, however, shows genuine promise for the district. I'm not sure whether to peg it to, uh, to the laudable enthusiasm displayed by our surveyors, or the warmth and compassion of the services we've offered and of the government works for all pro campaign. Either way, we believe that many agencies we've collaborated with deserve rich praise for the conduct during this campaign and the near 60% increase in voting registration dress in no small part of the many shoulders. Special thanks go to the Mithaval family, who has been valuable help in setting up our controversial tea booth boosted our public image immensely. No, consider roping them into our people's agencies. We should not, however, take an isolated success as a sure power guarantee of, of future victories. Below have outlined aspects of Republic relations in which I believe we can do better. To summarize, we should consider a male voting approach for our elderly voters and tie that in with the campaign's targeted at elderly and dependent households. These demographics are less likely to vote if we do not come to them. If so, let's not shy away from calling. A spade a spade on behalf of the government of Russia, I would like to thank our constituents and tireless workers for what has been a hugely su successful campaign. If the best of Russia are with us, then who can stand against us? We're reaching the people heart by heart. An educated populace. Every section of Russia's society has been impacted by the long war, but none more cruelly so than its children. The new generation knows nothing other than poverty, danger, and upheaval. Even such a simple luxury as an education like the parents has is unattainable. The decline in educational levels is a slow-moving crisis that, if, if, if it goes unsolved, will cause a serious shortage of skilled workers in the years to come. Building, funding, and improving schools across the Republic is both an ethical and economic solution. It fulfills the national development goals while increasing opportunities for millions. Nothing will signify, signify Russia's slow but sure return to normality. More than a mass of children fill their classrooms for the first time in a generation. Which we're trying to get academic base. Because right now, academic base is... We just got up here, and for equipment, we just got up here as well, so... Might as well do this one next. Standardized schools. As we embark on our mission to improve education, one sort of issue sticks out immediately. Curriculum and educational standards vary enormously between schools across the Republic. Uh, as distance, inequality of resources, and the lack of communication between localities drive them further apart. Schools that do not adequately educate the children are scarcely better than schools at all. The potential is great for a wide scale gap to develop between various regions of the country. Many of these problems stem from the lack of widely penetrating central bureaucracy. The government can do far better setting and at far better job at setting and enforcing standards than the disparate array of local educational arrangements that exist currently, and if it must be the Republic's less advantaged children are to get a better lot in life. So the next one would be research, I think, right? Yeah, research. And where are we at for research? It's marginal. If we wait about five a month, eight, and we can probably wait for this one. So, uh, we could use more equipment, though. Consolidate the defense industry. The public wants to take the fight to the other pretender states in the east and eventually against the Germans in the west. It's essential that we have a defensive industry capable of supplying the vast quantities of equipment for a new mil model military will require. This cannot be done through small enterprises and cottage industries. We must think larger, consolidating our various arms manufacturers to unlock the economies of scale necessary for a growing republic. Through par partial nationalization of state-guided mergers, the PSD will ensure that our soldiers will never want for bullets or quality equipment. So that's looking all very good. Let's get some jet engines and let's grab some better artillery, which is one of the reasons why we did so war badly in the wars for reunification. Also, we had the rest of the girls upon us, because I think these guys probably did something here, but you never know. And down here, we're so left-leaning and influential in the right national swing is kind of kind of sad. Oh, maybe we should have waited to do that. Actually, this was for equipment, which is actually really good. Oh, education. Which is still fine with me. I'm okay with that at all, completely. Uh, this one will be... Uh, agriculture begin to rapidly improve, which is not bad, too. So, agriculture is where? 10? 
another month and we'll have it. So just got to wait a little bit. And actually, by the time that happens, expand raw opportunities. A key characteristic of modern society is the productivity of the agricultural sector, with the machines doing the work of 100 field hands in half the time. It's not to say that we despair to the work of the honest farmer. Far from it. Most Russian farmers live out in the mouth with antiquated tools and outdated machinery forcing reliance on manual labor. Oftentimes, their own children the future of our nation. We must invest in the means of agricultural production, subsidizing access to new technologies and labor-saving contraptions to improve productivity, ensure farming profitability, and give hope to farmers that they are working towards a brighter future. But if you like to read about better agricultural methods, please go right ahead. Apologies for speaking very quickly. I'm just, I just like this campaign. Mass mechanization? Very nice. 11 days left, 50, and we want to import heavy machinery for better industrial equipment as well, once again. And 3.5 is not great, but you know what? We got a good amount of growth. We're putting down the surplus quite a bit. So, very, 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 very good stuff. And we're going to get more than one political power a day, which is actually, I would say, quite, quite good. Wow, minus 0.5, minus 0.45. Uh, party rate change is very, very nice. Roads would be nice, but after this one, we're going to go with this one. Rede redeeming our history. The streets of the Republic were no longer a battleground for feuding radicals, nor were the political assassinations a viable way to mark the passing of the days. The leadership of Svetlana Stalina had cleaned up the behavior of the people, but cannot wipe away their opinions. The debate of how the history of our Republic should be discussed has become a contentious subject in the halls of the legislature, with many calling for focus on the glory of Russia. They say that leftism and division have diluted the common identity of the Russian people and desire for that to be rectified. The left has mobilized their political capital against this, but it's the right who holds the keys of power that are needed for the reunification of our nation. 3.7, not good. Next up, we will maybe expand the power grid some more. We do get quite a bit more stability, even though we don't really need it. I'm more concerned about getting more war support like normal. We have, okay, 31 divisions. Okay, that that's a, a big boy number, so we could probably, we're done cutting, doing that for now. Political thought, it's all right. Ah, relief for Dolvanger's victims? Sure, why not? Free relations? It's all good. Rival status, 0%, because Omsk is always destined to just be very violent towards them, so. Alrighty. Emphasize shared identity. Regardless of our heritage, be we Great Russian, Tartar, Jewish, German, Ukrainian, we are all united in our participation within our democracy and residents within the Republic. Whilst the politicians of the left and right may call it to silence people solely for their faith and ethnicities, we are the position above all of them. Atop the pinnacle of democracy, our policy regarding ethnicity thusly shall focus on the fact that all of us are citizens of the Republic, participants in the grand democratic experiment that has already liberated so much of our motherland. We may call ourselves Great Russians or Tartars or Ukrainians, but at heart we are all equal in the patriotic humanity. Time to drastically increase the, how much uh, we uh, we need here. If you're wondering about this, please go right ahead. We still have a surplus? That's actually really good. 0.15 is not very much, but you know what? That's actually quite good. Um, the more oil we can invest, the better. Free infrastructure would be good, pretty good too, but we can get that one too. Oh boy, that's not looking good now, is it? Some basic arty. Real basic arty. Alright, so this is where we're at. It's not looking very good. Mobilizing takes forever for our guys. Let's go and save just in case, because our divisions are looking ultra bad. Guys, <laughs> if you want to read that, please go right ahead. Um, but we're going to help go to war with them. Stay back. Hopefully we can throw our divisions in there faster. The 
updating our history in the classroom. Alright class, today we'll begin again learning about the colonization and conquest of Siberia. Many centuries ago, Russia was much smaller than it was before the Great Patriotic War and the Russian Revolution. Siberia remained much of a wasteland with few people living there. To expand the glory of the empire and spread Russian culture, the Tsar decided to settle more Russians east of the Urals. Nowadays, many Russians <clears throat> uh, live in Siberia. It's no different from Russia the further west you go. Expanding the Siberia made Russia big and strong. No one wants to be a tiny country, do they? The teacher paused and looked around the classroom, finding a boy with his hand up. Teacher, what happened to the people in Siberia before we went there? Did they go somewhere else? The boy questioned. The teacher paused a moment thinking, well, as I said, there were some people in Siberia before us. Not much change for them, though. They are still there, even in Siberia today. Back then, though, they, are, they were ruled by terrible cons and suffered under raiders until Russia united them and brought them into Russia. With the Russian culture, they learned to work together with each other and the new Russians. Content with their explanation, the teacher began to change the subject. Then the boy spoke up once again. Didn't they fight back, though, like we fought the Germans? Well, it's nothing like what happened at all, replied the teacher, obviously vexed by the boy. Those are two different, entirely situations. They just fought us, of course, but they were murdering poor innocent Russians. They had to be fought. Meanwhile, the Germans planned to exterminate all the Russia. The Germans were brutish devils. While well, the Russians were pure savers. No, I don't want to hear about this any longer. We're going to talk about the war with the Polish Commonwealth to liberate the Slavic people there. Open your books, page 402, please. Sounds right to me. Enact the communization laws. Symbols may seem just like symbols at first, sure, but to many people who have suffered under the tyrants of Russia, they are extremely hurtful and terrifying reminders of times we wish to move beyond. And that any political party, no matter how small, will gleefully use these symbols to identify themselves with the monsters of the past is disgusting. Prominent symbols of the communist regime and certain warlords will be banned, except for art and historical purposes. These legacies will have no place in modern Russia, and if people that march under them can't find something new, maybe the sign their beliefs should be left in the past as well. Now they're beating us up. Can you, de can you mobilize any slower? Like seriously, this is really sad. This is incredibly sad how slow the mobilization is. How slow do you mobilize? Jesus Christ. Now since we're here, we might as well do that. Seriously, stop failing. I mean, I mean, my God. It's been weeks, hasn't it? I'm pretty sure it's been many weeks, actually, since we've begun the, the whole war thing. But this also helps to uh, keep pressure off the Euro states and they wish they can fight as well, so. Oh, my God. This whole... No Step Back really screwed up. Toolbox here. No, not Toolbox here. Toolbox here and No Step Back really screwed up TNO. It's really bad how it screwed it up and really made it. The Russian identity. Seeing this year, the proposal before no our existence, or at its existence, the party program regarding Russian identity was dripping with a dagger or danger. A political landmine had found a way to her desk, shoving a wrench in her proceedings with more important matters. On the left were those that supported autonomy. Russia, they ar rightly argue, was neither wholly European or Asian. Beneath her shattered banner lived many races Burats, Kazakhs, Tatars, Bashkirs, each had a unique customs and a distinct identity. Trying to force them into some sort of unitary Russian identity, as their forebears had done, would only lead to resentment, and in the case of uniting Russia, proper resistance or popular resistance was an untenant prospect. On the right were her comrades of sorts, advocating the exact opposite. The task before Russia was grand, uniting a broken and disparate people against the Teutonic invader. There'd be no room for bickering in the unification struggle to come. The peoples of Russia for centuries shared an identity, regardless of ethnicity, and could only restore themselves behind such a common name. Ultimately, she did not feel strongly either way. This was a theoretical issue, something to be resolved when they had the luxury to do so. Much more pressing was rebuilding an economy guarding against foreign threats and establishing control over newly acquired territories. Yet she still knew the inflammatory debate that had conspired to bring this proposal to her desk. It was the right wing that held the most sway, and it was the right wing that kept her in power. In the interest of the free Russian Republic to come, many compromises would have to be made. Begrudgingly, she signed off on the right wing's proposal, authorizing the blanket, their blanket in an attempt to shape the Russian future in their image. To live in Russia was to be Russian, and insignificant cultures be darned. Besides, what would matter most to the Bashkirs and Tatars, bread and electricity, or some pseudo autonomy? Let's hope, let's hope it's worth it. I still got a lot of stuff here, so. It's definitely going to be one heck of a bloody fight with these guys, so. <clears throat> hmm. A charter of universal rights? Uh, if we have to. 
As known after the past few rules granting citizens legal rights, we must also codify it into the Constitution. The great democracies of the world have unassailable provisions of protected people, and so will we. And thus we bring forth an Equal Rights Amendment. Modeled after the Bill of Rights in America, we'll make sure an egalitarian nation that grants everyone equal rights and permanent future of Russia. Permanent future of Russia. And that's going to be hard for any would-be authoritarians to roll back. The goal is to bleed them dry as much as humanly possible. And maybe just beat them up in, in the meantime, anyways. Ah, I see the capitulated one of them. It's alright. All it tells me is that they gotta deal with more resistance issues. Lots and lots of resistance issues. But that's okay. We'll make up for it. Oh, another Republic's heroes. Due to our history as a unified Western Russia, our Republic is a Republic of heroes. Innumerable men and women fought for to make a Republic whole and put down the tyrannical extremists. <clears throat> oh, come on, stupid lag. <sighs> they always interrupt us. Like. What are the dead even doing? Uh, extremists and warlords that once bled a rush from Angles to Samara. After such service to our republic, we too deserve to provide a service to our veterans and heroic soldiers. Veterans of the West Russian War and Unification War shall be taken care of, provided with a generous stipend as a reward for the service. Additionally, this action presents a wonderful opportunity for the image of a party, regardless of one's alignment within the PSD. All of our deputies and regional politicians can at least agree on the fact that Russia's heroes deserve recognition. Let us assist them in doing so assist the longevity of our party's administration. A veteran, man, I'm not stupid. If it weren't for the bottle, none of you would be come around. Vadim, or such was the climax of Nadadia's lengthy argument with the old man, Vadim, the most stubborn veteran in all of Russia. Nadia sighed, threw her hands up in defeat, and finally departed the little cabin. An hour after hands, or after her friends had early left, all except Pavel, as it turned out, who smiled at her from a chair on the porch, causing instant guilt and embarrassment to come bubbling to the surface. You have a strange taste in friends, she, he spouted with scathing sarcasm. She shot him a glare, and then he stood up a punch in the shoulder. She hated to admit it, but the statement held some truth. What was she doing hanging around an old soldier all day? Her friends had come for the booze and the tall tales, two things Vadim had in spades. It was an entertaining spectacle, to be sure, but for the rest of the young people in Siktiv card, nothing more. I just think that old fool needs some help, is all. It isn't healthy to spend all your time drunk, weaving words and reminiscing alone. Besides, there's a good heart buried in there somewhere, Pavel responded knowingly. Well, if you want to spend all your time around the old coops with Soviet flags in your porch, I won't stop you. She knew he was right on some level. Who was she to tell some old man what to do? Still, each week she would find herself lingering in Vadim's residence, shooting the crap in lengthy kitchen discussions. There was something tender about the old man. As the months went by, mild curiosity became a genuine friendship. Vadim had become Nadia's pet project, and she encouraged him to come into the town. Like a turtle coaxed from the shell, her efforts began to yield fruit. Who says young and old can't be friends? I don't know of anyone who says they can't be friends, but whatever. Oh, they stopped attacking. Hmm, interesting. Need more anti tank, huh? Away with the dust, things had changed. Now I just remember her conversation with him the night before. It had been a rough day, rejecting a wealth or class project uh, and pros pros romantic prospect. Vadim, usually a belligerent complainer, had noticed her change in attitude. He was calm, caring in for once, or confident. He had sat, she had sat crying on his furniture, feeling better after a long talk. Today, she approached a small cottage from a distance. A pet formed in her stomach. Vadim's flag was down and his front door wide open. Two cars flanked each wall and an armed militant leaned against one. What's going on? She cried out, or called out nervously. Displaying symbols of anti-democratic regimes is a crime the militant retorted matter-of-factly. What, what do you care? Nadia felt sick. Uh, as if there was anyone in a sick car who would resist such a measure. It would be Vadim, though he could hardly 
make his way across the house sometimes. She had no doubt that's a tough old dude would throw a punch before taking down his flag voluntarily. The thought of a dean bloodied and languishing in jail was almost too much to bear. She set off in a panic, afraid of what it would become, or what she would find when she arrived. He should not have violated the decommunization statutes. Poverty relief, everybody? Absolutely. Why do y'all stop attacking? What's wrong with y'all? Why did they stop? Charter of Universal Rights? Why not? What if I told you you're not allowed to stop and that you're going to win no matter what? A united Russia. Russia is still geographically torn asunder by the other warlords in the east and by the Germans in the west. But though we may not be united in a territorial sense, we're united in a much bigger one. For all Russians are united in spirit. And we're a state that shows this unity more than any other. We march united and committed for Russia united by equality and Russia united by strong national identity. And that unity and commitment towards Russia shall see us through till the end. We've lost quite a few guys, but we've killed off many more soldiers than what we originally had. The divisions, they got plenty of manpower. That's dropping, slowly dropping. Plenty of anti tank. We will stop the attacks very soon just because we can't sustain this uh, level of attack for now. Um, so, there you go. Hold, 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 hold. Don't worry about it. Nice. <clears throat> A shining precedent. We've done it. People doubted that the SPSD would exercise its authority in a peaceful, constructive, and democratic manner, but we have, and our agenda has been enacted entirely within the confines of the law, and no extraordinary measures taken, and the will of the people has been respected to boot. That's a glorious victory for democracy, showing that great change can be accomplished within the system. Let us hope this convinces the population that our system is sustainable and strong as well. I have your divorce, oh boy. Come on, come attack us. You guys are not ooh, not strong. We're going about better research facilities, please go right ahead. We'll get back to the schools eventually. Eventually. That's a shining president and a generation of engineers. Rebuilding a country is a tireless endeavor of an enormous number of skilled workers, engineers chief among them. Without them, it would be impossible to erect bridges, lay down vast lengths of road, design military vehicles, or perform any other of the staggering variety of tasks necessary to keep a society running. But engineers are short of supply in Russia, owing to a general diminishment in educational capacity, and there are far too few to satisfy the exponentially growing demand. Increasing attendance in engineering programs is not just a matter of economics, it's a matter of national security. Through subsidies, to private schools and the establishment of new public schools, technical schools, the government can encourage the formation of a new generation of bright young engineers who will take the country to tremendous new heights. If we can win here, that'd be great. If we can win here, that'd also be great. You have to win. You're not. You're not allowed to lose. You're literally not allowed to lose. I love how how overpowered they make. Not overpowered, but way too strong. Omsk is. What if we come with? Cannot win here. Why? Incredibly stupid. I mean, why did they make them just so overpowered? I don't understand why. Why? I mean, maybe they are overpowered, honestly. Looming fiscal crisis? Yeah, that does nothing. That literally does nothing. <laughs> so stupid. Mm hmm. Shining precedent. So that's all going to get done. 
roads across Russia, the Russian and Republican army. All our brave men in the field have accomplished a lot for us, yes, but we need to start bringing the Russian Republican army to contemporary standards. The Germans, Japanese, and Americans all have top-notch militaries, and it's likely due to the advanced tactics and modern weapons, neither of which we currently have. In order to restore Russian prestige, we must work to modernize the army and join the ranks of global superpowers in terms of military might. How can you not win here with this many divisions? Jesus Christ! One, two, three, four, five, six divisions! You can barely beat two enemy ops divisions. Who designed this? Jesus Christ, this is stupid. They can barely win there. Are you kidding me? This is why you have you have to use Consequence sometimes in TNO. It's just crap like this that like does, does not make any sense. And we have your superiority as well. That's one thing in Zotalus maybe with the mountain effect, but Jesus Christ. Yeah, I guess there's some mountains here, but come on. Come on. I don't give a fuck about the mountains. I really don't. Especially for a division this small. That maybe is like 18 combo with max. You're not allowed to lose. Kill them off immediately. Do not lose, you piece of doo-doo. Go in, go in, kill them all off, kill them all off. What, are you kidding me? Uh, oh my god. So stupid. I did not click that. Ding dongs, come on. I, this is so stupid. I know it's mountains. But I don't care. That is incredibly stupid. It's able to hold out again and again and again. Roads across Russia. A nation without infrastructure, infrastructure to name... As a nation in name only. Bereft of the connections that allow for commerce and travel, the country divided the, for the people's concerns solely local. Russia was once far more connected than it is now. Years of bombing and warlordism caused cause of retreat. As citizens refused to stray further from the immediate places of residence. Although there have been minor improvements as local governments built for their own purposes, much of the country remains far behind the Soviet era in this regard. If Russia is to emerge under the world stage, the Republic needs to forcibly tackle this crisis. The revitalization of our road infrastructure will allow commerce to expand and fuel economic growth as, uh, <clears throat> well as incalculably, Improving a lot of ordinary people throughout the expansion of work opportunities, which would be a good thing. Oh, there we go. They're out march. Get up now to the officer. My squad is ready for the march. Uh, officer, we are preparing to move the first five kilometers on your go. Besides in the squad rustling in its frantic activity, the water canteens needed filling, local bags checked, the rifles inspected. There were barely enough hands on deck to accomplish it all. As the officer lumbered away, Kirov whispered, Crap bag, what an insufferable son of a heck. Uh, and scheduling this gosh darn idiotic march on a Friday ev 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 evening of all things? Did the colonel have his brain install where his arsehole was supposed to be? Uh, it was intolerable, and the only reason why he put up with it all was because the Rus Re Republican army was still the finest pension fund in all of the Republic. Kirov was a man of faith. He had faith only in what men could bring him, and that was. That was. And having looked through the pension plans, he knew exactly what the next few decades would bring him, assuming he lived through it all. What time to speculating on the future of the president and the squad awaited him. He moved towards the squad. Are you a lot ready to go? Get your thumbs out of your butts, gentlemen. It's time to start hauling booty, and if you have a lot of time to anything that's men without brains can get very, very far in life. It's time to start putting that theory to practice. A chuckle escaped the squad, and Kirov's gaze shot to its source. Glaring the cons conscript, Kirov let the coldness of the eating into his voice. Did you think that was funny, Private? Don't give me an answer. You'll have time to think about that on guard duty tomorrow. Double shifts. He turned to the rest of the squad. Get ready to move. One mic. And anyone else who thinks themselves a clown, uh, can you let me know? I still have a roster to fill. Darn, Private. I'll add a whole squad laughing. An economy for all of us. I think I'm going to butcher every single last Omsk soldier there is. As economic improvement takes Russia into the modern age, we must be careful to avoid the concentration of increased material wealth in too few hands. The economy is growing particularly in urban areas, with the potential of leaving our rural localities behind. And businesses often invest so much in improving physical capital and managerial salaries that they leave nothing for the citizens. As all the veterans of the Sixth Cars turbulent as political scene know, inequality causes resentment, which can, can and frequently does lead to political instability. Keeping wealth from becoming successfully concentrated naturally requires government action. Whatever programs, stringent regulations, and taxation on unscrupulous businesses should keep inequality in check, ensuring that Russia's prosperity is truly enjoyed by all.
Plus 109,000 is scum. Uh, literally just scum. Nice. Very good. I want more. But we can't get more just yet. Uh, lessons from the last war. That's not bad. City form technology. Lessons from the unification wars. Slow improve. I think I chose this one last time, so let's do a lesson for the unification wars. It was not too long ago when Russia was still fractured into various warlord states, each with their own dreams and aspirations of unifying the motherland. In some regions, chaos remained widespread. It was only through our military that we become the strong force we are today. There are many lessons that can be learned from the unification wars, including the tactics used to defeat insurgents and the military strategies beyond the most successful warlords here in Russia. Political interference? Well, this is better than it was earlier. Cold days. Oh. Oh, it's 69, huh? Cool. Way to be peaceful, huh? Grand showdown, all right. Two hundred thousand dead. That's not enough dead. This looming fiscal crisis literally does nothing for us. Nice, not bad. Over there, at least. Poverty is approaching about fifty percent. Kind of for all of us. <clears throat> Tactical flexibility. Sometimes the grand battle plans may be disrupted by unexpected, uncontrolled events, uh, but we cannot expect every war to be carried out perfectly. Instead of relying on one large battle plan, we should start focusing more on officer initiative. Letting the individual commanders make the call based on unique conditions around them. Because their overall command structures may break down, we may need to delegate the decision making to the individual units on the ground. We must uh, let each rep respective unit use the tactics they are best suited for for their respective situation when it's the war. How are you losing here? What a bunch of losers. Kill them all off. Whoa, how do we win that fast? What? No. That's BS. That really is BS. What the heck? We should not have won that fast there. We need to get... Usually you have to get... You basically have to take Omsk. How do we do that? That doesn't make any sense. Well, I suppose the devs have been working on this, but like that makes literally no sense. <laughs> the more Latino devs do, I, the more less it makes sense to me. The less it makes sense to me. I mean, what the heck? Let's see if we can integrate uh, Warnberg. Well, let's integrate these places first too, and integrate uh, the possible construction. So that's nice. No? Okay. Modernized force. Though all our Russian Republican army is mighty within Russia, it does not compare to the global contemporary forces of the three superpowers. Many of our tactics and weapons are from the German Soviet War over 20 years ago. It's some time to bring the RRA to modern age. We'll renovate the army by increasing the military budget, investing in new military technologies, and exploring the most recent military tactics in the end. The Russian Republican army will become a Cold War era ready force to be reckoned with. I'm glad we waited to get this stuff done, so. Honestly, I've already done a lot of this before, so I think for the rest of this episode, we're just going to... I'll let you just read the rest of these. So, the Ministry of Defense, here's that one. Uh, the Ministry's Antics, which, I don't know. At this point, like, I don't really care. I've shown these before. The Fisherman's Dream. The Russian Republican Air Force as well. We have Infantry Equipment Trials. Improved on, improved on the Armored Corps, which I've done before, so if you don't know about that, please go ahead. Reopen the Vyaka General Staff Academy, which is very nice as well. Uh, strategic Supremacy. On to the World Stage. Open the gates as well. I do that one. Uh, the last democracies of Europe. Appeal for recognition. Embassy funding. Call for investment. Across the seas. A visit to Washington. As well as apply for elephant aid. But I think uh, between this episode and the next, I will go ahead and do... Oh, they actually resist. Terrible news. If you're going this, please go ahead. Um, I will go ahead and like show you the events that do pop up. But uh, 
you'll see that in the next episode, in the very beginning of the next episode. So, um, what actually is this? Improve relations. Nascent. Well, we could keep doing this again and again and again, or just prepare an invasion. Um, I mean, if we keep doing this, we keep get adding more hospitals and school construction. So, and we got quite a bit of time. So, we might as well just wait. And if we have to invade eventually, then so be it. But if you enjoy the video, regardless of me complaining, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow. We want to record a lot of the rest, of this rest part of the Russia, and eventually invade the rest of the eastern parts. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.